this is what Effie reads. Today I am going to be going through some LGBTQ plus book recommendations. I've got a little bit of everything in this video, or at least I think it's a little bit of everything. There's some non-fiction, there's some literary, there's some middle grade fantasy. I'm sure I've missed some genres. <laughs> but hopefully there's something for everybody's taste. I'm going to start off by saying that I use queer and LGBTQ plus somewhat interchangeably. I found a few years back that queer felt like the label that best suited me. So I tend to use it to encompass everything. So if I use it in this video, just know that my usage is to encapsulate everything that LGBTQ plus stands for. A lot of these books I read as ebooks or audiobooks, so I don't have many of these books to physically hold up, but I will be sure to include pictures on the screen to accompany every one of them. So to start off, we've got three books by Molly Ringel. Two of these books are fantasy and one is a contemporary. So the contemporary is called All the Better Part of Me and it follows Cinta as he realises that he is bisexual and starts crushing on his best friend. It was a really cute story and it had really really good bye vibes basically. It was a lot of fun and it was also the first Molly Ringel that I read and was what started off my love for her. I also should point out that up until that point I didn't really read romance so this is the book that converted me to seeking out romance and occasionally reading it. The next book by Molly Ringel is Lava Red Feather Blue and it follows Merrick as he accidentally wakes up a slumbering prince called Larkin and in doing so manages to awaken an evil fairy. There's a lot of adventuring questing, there's lots of different fae in this story and it has a sort of enemies to lovers vibe. And then there's Sage and King again also by Molly Ringel and it follows young Prince Zaya as he after his family is all killed in what seems to be a freak accident and he learns the secrets of the sages and starts to fall for a particularly powerful sage called Cole. The next recommendation that I've got is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. This follows Karis, a young girl who manages to wake up an automaton in a world where it's thought that all the automatons are dead. She is set on reuniting with her brother and it has a fun sort of adventure element to it. It's pirates and there's amazing rap in it. Our protagonist Karis is asexual. Then we've got Crema by Johnny Christmas and Dante Louise. It follows Esme, a barista who is able to see ghosts when she drinks too much coffee, and Yara, the owner of a 
Coffee Plantation. It is a relatively short graphic novel and it's very sweet, very spooky, a lot of fun. Next we've got Across the Green Grass Fields which is number six in the Wayward Children series. It's as written by Sean and Maguire. It is actually the only Wayward Children book that I've currently read. It follows Regan who upon discovering that she is intersex has an upsetting experience with the person that she thought was her best friend and walks through a portal into a land full with scent filled with centaurs it's got a really lovely found family vibe and it also beautifully twists the chosen one trope on its head the next recommendation is a contemporary called kings queens and in-betweens by tanya Bethaju. it follows nima a young a young lesbian girl as she explores her feelings and is introduced to the drag scene in her local area it was just a lot of fun really next recommendation i've got for you is rainbow milk by paul mendez this was a book that I received in a queer book box and it follows Jesse, a young black gay man, after he is thrown out of his Jehovah's Witnesses group and then moves to London and enters into the world of sex work and also drug addiction it's a very raw book but so engaging and you root for all the characters so much the next recommendation that i have got for you is winter's orbit by everina maxwell in this book you follow Prince Keem and Count Jainan as they enter into an arranged marriage. It's a there's a lot of political intrigue, but there's also a very cute romance as they both don't realise that they've got genuine feelings for each other and there's a slow building yearning throughout the story. Next we've got the Killing Eve series or possibly the Villanelle series depending on where you look. The first book is Codename Villanelle also known as Killing Eve and then there's No Tomorrow and Die For Me. It follows an agent called Eve as she tries to hunt down a very talented serial killer called Villanelle and as she chases her down, hunts for her, she ends up developing a respect that blossoms into a very deep crush and the story just goes on from there really. The next couple of books are by Benjamin Class. They are Second Dad Summer and the sequel Everything Together. They are a middle grade series following Jeremiah as he spends the summer with his dad and his dad's new boyfriend. I was very pleasantly surprised by Second Dad Summer as it had the kind of fluffiness that you get with middle grade but it also didn't shy away from more serious topics that the queer community deals with and it also had a 
brilliant gay elder character. The next recommendation I've got for you is Maiden Mother Crone, which is an anthology of stories written by trans femme authors, edited by Gwen Benaway. This book had a wide variety of genres, I think mostly leaning towards fantasy, but there is some science fiction and some crime thrown in there, and pretty much all of the stories were of a really high standard, and there was a wide variety of cultural influences as well. The next recommendation is another anthology and it is Love Beyond Body, Space and Time edited by Hope Nicholson. This is an anthology of queer and two-spirit indigenous writers and again it's got a variety of genres in. I think this one leans more science fiction but it does have hints of fantasy to it. The next recommendation I've got for you is The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan. It follows Mara and Pearl. It has a lot of magical realism to it and was just a really sweet sapphic romance with some hard-hitting elements as well. The next recommendation I've got for you is Breathe Out Slow by A.D. Lawless. This story follows Ryan, who is dealing with the death of a, his boyfriend, and it deals with grief and healing, and there's a lovely romance as well with a character called Liam. The next recommendation I've got for you is a non-fiction and it is called Queer Heroes by Arabelle Sicardi and Sarah Tannant-Jones. In this book you get a brief bio of 53 important members of the LGBTQ plus community and there's also absolutely stunning artwork throughout. The next recommendation I've got for you is Even If We Break by Marika Nikan. This book I can't describe any better than the blurb. It's five friends go to a cabin, four of them are hiding secrets, three years of history to bind them, two are doomed from the start, one person wants to end this, no one is safe. This is a book that has absolutely amazing representation. It includes a and it includes an MB character, a trans mask character, some potentially bi characters, as well as autism rep. It was incredible incredibly creepy. I had chills down my spine as I was reading it and it's a very very fantastic book. We're down to the last few recommendations. We've got Her Lady to Love by Jane Walsh. This book is an historical fiction following Nora and Jacqueline, a couple of debutantes. Honora is looking for a husband whilst Jacqueline is just enjoying the life of being a debutante. However, they start to catch feelings for each other. The next recommendation I've got for you is a non-fiction and it is Queer Baiting and Fandom by Joseph Brennan. It explores the use of and history of queer baiting in popular culture. It was really eye-opening and enlightening and just a really easy to read non-fiction actually. And the final recommendation is The Flower Ranger by JJ Ellis. This book follows Holly Blaine and Tetsu Tananaka 
as they hunt for a killer who is positioning the bodies of his victims within elaborate floral arrangements. This book is set in Japan and was a really gripping crime novel. Polly Blaine is a journalist and Te Tanaka is a detective. The character of Blaine is in a relationship with another woman and I believe they are also trans however it could be their partner. It's been a couple of years since I read this book. This is one of those books where it features queer characters but their queerness is just an aside. So that was a pile of LGBTQ plus book recommendations just in time for Pride Month. I hope you have a very wonderful Pride Month. I know that it's still going to be a very very strange one this year as well. Leave me a rainbow emoji down below if you've gotten this far and until next time bye